Number 10. On July 11, 2012, Copenhagen Zoo employees found the remains of a 20-year-old man of Afghan descent who had apparently scaled a fence and gained access to the tiger's enclosure in the early hours of the morning before any staff was on the premises. One of the theories that was tossed around was that the young man might have wanted to end his life by offering himself up to the feline predators. Number 9. In September 2015, at Hamilton Zoo, about 80 miles outside Auckland, New Zealand's biggest city, another tiger attack occurred. This time, a female zookeeper was the victim of Oz, the only male Sumatran tiger at the zoo. Apparently, the employee opened a gate to allow the tigers access to an outdoor enclosure, a normal occurrence. But 45 minutes later, zoo authorities offered refunds to all the patrons and closed the zoo down upon hearing that the poor woman had been attacked and killed. Number 8. On Christmas Day 2007 at the San Francisco Zoo in California, a 300-pound female Siberian tiger named Tatiana managed to get out of its pen and attack three young men. The four-year-old feline managed to get over the 12-and-a-half-foot fence and get to her victims. Part of the problem was put on the fact that the U.S. Association of Zoos and Aquariums guidelines say that fences around tiger enclosures should be at least 16.4 feet high. Once she got out of her pen, Tatiana first clawed and bit 23-year-old Colbert Dalival, while 17-year-old Carlos Souza Jr. and Colbert's younger brother Paul yelled at the animal in an attempt to scare it away. Instead, Tatiana went for Souza, slashing his neck as the brothers ran for help. After killing the teenager, the tiger followed a trail of blood left by Colbert to the zoo cafe, where it mauled both men. Four cops who had already discovered Sousa's body arrived at the cafe and found the cat sitting next to one of the bloody brothers. The officers used their patrol car's lights to distract the beast, and when it turned to approach the vehicle, all four opened fire, killing the animal. Number 7. In November 2008, 32-year-old custodian Nordin Martong, who had been working at the Singapore Zoo for less than six months, was mauled to death by two white tigers when he apparently teased them by waving a bucket and a broom at them. The visitors first thought that this was part of a show, like a tiger taming act, but they quickly understood that it wasn't when the largest of the zoo's tigers suddenly lunged at him, knocking him over before he rolled into a ball and tried to cover the tiger's head with the bucket. When the tiger bit Montong on the back and started dragging him into the tiger's den, the visitors started screaming in horror, trying to alert authorities and distract the animals. Unfortunately, the severe bite Montong had received on the neck and his fractured skull, brought on by the tiger biting down on him, did him in. Apparently, Montong had been having a bad day because earlier, an Australian couple had seen him shouting and throwing things at the crocodile enclosure. Number 6. On Thursday, April 18, 1996, Canadian wildlife biologist Patricia Wyman, on her third day working as a caretaker in the Wolf Center section of the Halliburton Forest and Wildlife Preserve in the province of Ontario, Canada, was apparently killed by four captive wolves. Wyman had visited the preserve many times before being hired and had taken part in wolf education programs. Eerily enough, the day before her death, Wyman had expressed concern about one of the pack's males, but had only spoken of these worries to her fiancé. The next day, two of the Wolf Center's employees found the 24-year-old biologist's body in the wolf enclosure. Her clothes had been totally removed and strips of it were strewn around her body. The wolves were killed to be tested for rabies, tests that came back negative. It's thought that Wyman might have been encircled by the pack and might have tripped on a branch, drawing blood, which would have provoked the wolf's predatory instinct and taste for blood. Number 5. In April 2012, Mila, the 39-year-old African elephant, who had retired at the Franklin Zoo in Auckland, New Zealand, after a three-decade career as a circus performer, attracted some very sad and negative attention when she accidentally killed a zookeeper who had been caring for her that day. The incident happened on a Wednesday afternoon while the zoo was open to the public, but we don't know if anyone witnessed the actual tragedy. Number 4. February 24, 2010 was a very sad day at SeaWorld. That was the day that Tillicum the Killer Whale killed its 40-year-old trainer Don Brancho by grabbing her by her ponytail, pulling her into the pool, and swinging her around in its mouth. The trainer's jaw was fractured as well as part of her vertebrae and ribs. One of her elbows and one of her knees were dislocated as well as her left ear while she was thrashed around in the pool. The autopsy determined that Brancho died of blunt force trauma to the head, neck, and torso. This horrible event happened during one of SeaWorld's shows, horrifying visitors who were quickly ushered out so that workers could try to corral Tillicum. By the time they retrieved Brancho's body, she was dead. Since surveillance cameras captured the horrifying scene, Brancho's family asked the court to keep the video private. 
Tilikum has lived at SeaWorld since 1992 and is the largest of its eight killer whales. Since Brancho's death, he's been removed from SeaWorld's show, and new protocols keep trainers away from the whale. SeaWorld has had a rough time with its reputation, and public outcry has certainly not helped. Number 3 in February 2012, a 63-year-old man who had worked at the Johannesburg Zoo for 40 years had recently come out of retirement because of staff shortages when he was killed by a 10-year-old female white lion named Nyanga, whom he had looked after. Joe Ramanitha was apparently preparing the animal's food and was attacked because a gate had been left open. Zoo staff had heard Romanitha screaming and rushed to help, but he had been bitten once on the neck and was already dead when he arrived in hospital. Number 2 this horrible story happened at the Pittsburgh Zoo in Pennsylvania. A mother who was hoping to give her two-year-old son a better view of an African wild dog enclosure accidentally dropped the toddler 14 feet onto the mesh above the pack of dogs. The autopsy revealed that little Maddox Durkosh survived the fall but not the attack of the wild dogs who are said to be very territorial and probably just decided the child did not belong. So sad. Number 1. In May 2013, 24-year-old zookeeper Sarah McClay of Glasgow, Scotland, was killed by a Sumatran tiger named Padang, who had just walked right through an open door at the Cumbria Safari Zoo. Apparently, hours after the attack, a bolt on top of the tiger's dark den door was found to be defective. Miss McClay died from multiple injuries, including puncture wounds to her neck. 